This is my first step-by-step -step painting video. The subject is James Hetfield from Metallica, and we're going to do a dry brush portrait. You'll need watercolor paper, black oil paint, mineral spirits, a kneaded eraser, and some bristle brushes. The supply list and a cheat sheet to this painting is listed on my website, so be sure to hit the link in the video description. I'm still going to lead you through the process step-by-step. -step. To begin, you'll need a pencil. Step 1. Draw the shape that you see. It sort of looks like a caption cloud. Step 2. Add the four shapes that you see for the eyes and the eyebrows. Notice how they fit into the shape from step 1. Step 3. Add the trapezoidal shape. The bottom of this shape will be the mouth line. Step 4 is not as tricky as it looks. The mouth and the mustache make a mushroom shape, and the nose connects the eye shape to the mushroom shape. The space in between the two shapes is for the shadow. Step 5. Add a shape for the top of the hair. If this was the 1980s, you would need bigger paper. Step 6. No, that's not hard. It all depends on how you look at it. You're welcome. Step 7. Draw the other hand. Step 8. Draw the shirt line. Step 9. Complete the shape of the head and add the C shape for the ear. Use the I shape as a guide where the C shape is drawn. Step 10. Add the highlight shape by the mouth. Step 11 is the trickiest step. Here is a close-up to help you. Spend some extra time to observe the placement of each shape and then draw. Step 12 is optional. If you wish, add the shading for the hand. Know that the placement of this shading does not have to be perfect. Hey everybody, it's Merrill. It is time for the, uh, oh, I was going to say shading portion. I guess it's painting portion today. Yeah, I surprised you. Um, as always, if you mess up, just hit that first picture to the left there, and there is going to be an extended shading tutorial. Uh, I'm going to be a little bit longer than usual, uh, both in this video and in that shading tutorial. But uh, I'll be uh, thorough. I'll be sure to be thorough. Um, you're going to need uh, watercolor paper, a kneaded eraser, uh, bristle brushes. Those are hard-tipped brushes. Uh, that's very important. You're not going to be able to do this with watercolor brushes. Um, you're also going to need uh, paint thinner, uh, turpenoid, it's called as an art supply, but it's a lot uh, more expensive when something's labeled an art supply. Um, uh, mineral spirits, that's the same thing. I'm not telling you to get all of these. Get mineral spirits. That's what you want. You don't want turpenoid, the art supply. Um, it's the same thing, more expensive. Anywho, um, okay, I got this process from a guy named um, Igor Kazarin. I hope I'm pronouncing... Uh, this uh, correctly, and I kind of put my own spin on it. Um, he, he is a master artist. Um, I believe his channel's name is uh, Portrait Drawing, um, or Portrait uh, Art, uh, one of those. Sorry, Victor. Uh, <laughs> but um, amazing artist. You'll know his work when you see it, because ju your jaw will drop. And you guys leave me all these compliments, and, you know, Merrill, you're the best. Uh, well, there's, there's always somebody out there that's better, and I certainly look to his channel uh, to learn a bit. And before I did this, um, you know, I, I looked at one of his videos. Um, I'm putting in the darker tones, and what you see at the top there is, is the, uh, the paint thinner uh, that I'm using, uh, the mineral spirits, same thing. Uh, and I'm using that, I think, perhaps a little bit more than he uses it. Um, you might not even call what I'm doing right now a dry brush, but I wanted to build up the tones kind of quickly. So I kind of thinned out the paint with um, the uh, the paint thinner, um, you know, and I applied to the surface of the uh, watercolor paper. And watercolor paper, that's very important. If you're going to try this on, um, you know, a regular sheet of paper, this process is not going to work. Um, wait until you see what happens with the kneaded eraser, uh, but that's a few minutes from now. Uh, I'm just, I'm working on making this dark, and there's a great way, a great 
tip um, that I'm going to give you to get the highlights in a little bit later. Uh, if you're familiar to his work, it's it's not going to be a, a surprise. But um, you know, if you've been watching my channel and you haven't seen his, uh, you know, this is going to be a surprise. So I made the forehead a little bit darker than uh, perhaps the reference image uh, showed me it was. It's okay. We're going to fix that. You're going to see me get rid of that highlight on the cheek, making the dark uh, the background extra dark, um, and. I'm using, um, oh, I want to stress this, bristle brushes. Yeah, that's in my notes. Bristle brushes. Um, you, you don't want the watercolor brushes because you're not going to be able to uh, to rub off uh, the the dry brush. Um, at this point, I am working in, in uh, dry brush. Uh, you know, I got the basic tones down, and you'll notice I'm going to dip a lot less into the mineral spirits. And I'm, I'm kind of letting, uh, that's a smaller palette than usual, not of palette paper. Um, I'm kind of letting it dry a little bit on the surface of the palette, and I'm scooping it up dry, and I'm applying it to the surface. Um, and it gets a little bit choppy, but um, you can you can certainly uh, move that around uh, as much as you can with the paint brushes. And again, in a few minutes, I'll show you the trick to smoothing everything out. You get some nice dark tones. Um, try to see these as shapes. I hope you all have hit the link in the video description, um, you know, because I spend a lot of time putting the images, the step-by-step -step images on my website, and it's especially helpful for the shading part. Uh, you'll see, uh, for instance, there's a shape that's, uh, there's a shadow that's a shape on, uh, on your left side, on his right side of his head, and you could kind of just look at some of those images, or you could pause the video, of course, uh, and you can put that in. Um, the shirt is going to be the darkest part, of course. He's wearing a black shirt. Uh, it gets really, really dark up in the upper right corner. Uh, his eyes are going to be very dark. Okay, now, here is the, the big tip. That is an eraser that I'm using. You're going to see me use a kneaded eraser, and you're going to see me use a pencil eraser and the, uh, the rectangular eraser. And I am carving in the highlights. Yes, black paint, black oil paint this is. I want to stress that. It's not acrylic, it's oil. Uh, black oil paint will erase from the surface of the watercolor paper. Uh, from what I gather, the mineral spirits gets absorbed, and the paint stays on the surface of the paper, and it moves around so nicely uh, with the eraser. So if you want to create those super strong highlights like you're seeing me do right now, just, uh, just do that. Um, start erasing. Uh, you should buy thicker watercolor paper. I have supply recommendations uh, on my website, uh, the exact type that I think that you should use. Um, it should be minimum 100-pound uh, paper, cold press, warm press, doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I tend to prefer the, uh, the, the warm press, but uh, you'll, you'll see on my website. That's kind of a new vocabulary term for you guys because you've been seeing me uh, do the pencil drawing for so long. This is kind of the same premise. It might even be easier for some of you, because think about it. You know, when you're using a fine tip, it takes a lot of shading to be able to build up uh, shapes, to build up the tones for the shapes. Uh, in this, you're working with a, a rounded tip, and a variety of rounded tips, because brushes come in different shapes and sizes, and it allows you to really get those shadows in fast. So if I was going to do something this dark, uh, you know, with a pencil drawing, I, I might as well, you know, just plan on being where I am for a year. Well, not a year, but a long time. It would take a really long time. And that, that's the beauty of using a paintbrush. Those of you who like using the fine tip point, um, you know, I, I understand. Painting is kind of a different way of thinking. Drawing, you have to think in terms of lines. Painting, you have to think in terms of shapes. I learned painting long before I learned drawing, so it's kind of ironic that I have a popular drawing channel. Um, I just, I get all the requests for drawings, so um, I continue with those. And I also figured that uh, in terms of art supplies, everybody would have a pencil in their house. And uh, painting, you know, you have to splurge a little bit for the painting supplies. Um, I chose dry brush uh, because all you need to do is buy one tube of paint. That's it. Uh, and the watercolor paper. You'll notice that the watercolor paper is going to be almost as, as eh, expensive as the paint. 
uh, but it, it's um, it, they sell big sheets of it, and it, it'll go somewhat of a long way. You could cut it into um, you know four or five pieces, and it's certainly cheaper than canvas. Uh, but anyway, I'm using the eraser. Now you see me, th this is my own spin on things. I'm using colored pencils uh, to finish this up. And it, it get those really strong highlights. Anywhere that the, uh, the paint did not come up as much as I'd like, I cover it over with the colored pencil. Um, I'm using, I'm still using the brush. And I'm kind of like alternating between a black and white color pencil. I have a few gray color pencils. Um, Prismacolor. Yeah, that's the only supply I'm really picky about. You don't want any other type of um, color pencils. You want Prismas. They're the best by far. Um, paint, eh, you know, there's a few different ones that you could use. But, um, you know, I, I used Rembrandt paint for this. It's it's kind of a medium of the line paint, uh, but you're going to be using uh, quite a bit of it. In fact, you probably saw me run out of paint and reapply at one point. Anyway, uh, that should be uh, the uh, entire uh, painting. I hope that you liked it, and um, yeah, leave me comments.